you've ever seen the different kinds of function types in Kotlin and wondered what the differences are, well, wonder no more. In this video, we're going to look at the usual function types, the numbered function interface types, the k function, k callable, k property types, and more, and we're going to sort them all out. So let's get started. As we've seen, Kotlin gives us a few different ways to write functions. The first and most obvious, of course, is to just declare a named function with the fun keyword. Another option is to write the function as a lambda, and we say that a lambda is a function literal because just like a number or string literal, it's an expression, so it can be assigned to a variable, or it can be passed to or from another function, which is almost certainly the more common way that lambdas are used. A third option is called an anonymous function, which isn't as common. Anonymous functions are also function literals, so just like lambdas, you can also assign them to variables or pass them to or from functions. Anonymous functions offer a few advantages over lambdas, brevity not usually being one of them, but in case you're not as familiar with them, I recently published a video that covers them in more detail. But for today, we're going to focus more on the types that can be associated with each of these kinds of functions. Now, I noted how function literals, so lambdas and anonymous functions, can be assigned to variables or passed to and from functions. Well, traditional named functions can also be used in those ways, it's just that they're definition isn't an expression, so if we want to use them in a part of our code that expects an expression, we have to use a function reference instead. To get a function reference, we use the callable reference operator, which is two colons used before the name of the function. So to assign a function to a variable or to pass it to or from another function, we can use lambdas, we can use anonymous functions, or we can use function references. Now, if we want to explicitly specify the type of a lambda, we use a function type. You're probably already familiar with this, but here's how it looks. This same function type can also be used for anonymous functions and for function references. Now, instead of explicitly specifying these types by hand, we can use IntelliJ or Android Studio's intention actions to explicitly specify the type for us. And when we do that, we'll notice quite a few options here. We've got k function 1, we've got k function, we've got the function type that we were using earlier, k callable, uh, function, k annotated element, and of course, any. So what are all these different types and when would you want to use them? Well, let's start with function. The function interface has a single type parameter, which represents the result type of the function. And as you can see, this interface has literally no information about any parameter types, and the interface itself is like completely empty. It doesn't declare any properties or functions, so what is it good for? Well, it turns out that it's mainly used within the source code of Kotlin itself, and as a base type for other types that we'll see in just a moment. And even within the Kotlin standard library, it's not used much, but it is used, for example, with Kotlin contracts for the calls in place contract, which needs to accept any kind of function regardless of its parameters. So while it has some purpose within Kotlin's code, I can't think of any reason why your typical application developer would ever need to use this function type. Now, if you're writing Kotlin code that needs to interop with Java, the function interface does have some related types that you might end up working with. So here in the JVM part of the standard library, we've got a file called functions.kt, which includes numbered function interfaces from function zero down to function 22. And these are all subtypes of the function interface that we just looked at. And the number at the end represents the number of parameters that the function has. So function zero has no parameters, function one has one parameter, function two has two parameters and so on. And you'll also notice that each of these has one more type parameter than the number at the end of its type, and that's because the last type parameter represents the return type of the function. So when would we use these? Well, these come into play when we're writing Java code that works with function types. So here I've got some Java code that is working with the Kotlin functions from earlier, so the named function, the lambda, and the anonymous function. And on this line, I'm taking a Java method reference of the times two function from Kotlin over here, and I'm assigning it to this operation one variable. And the function type here is 
part of the Java API. And then on the next line here, I'm using another type from Java's java.util.function package called unary operator. So when our Java code is getting a named function reference from our Kotlin code, we can use the relevant function types from the Java API, or we can use Kotlin's function one type like we're doing here on this other line. But when we change this so that it gets the times three function, which is the lambda, these types end up not working. And you can see we get a compiler error on the first two lines. And it's the same story with our anonymous function, which we can see if we change this to get times four, so when Java code is working directly with lambdas and anonymous functions, we can use these numbered function types. And even when we call a Kotlin function with a lambda, like you can see here, it uses this function one type. So that's function, but what about K function? What's the difference between these two? Well, the K family of types, including here, K function one, K function, K callable, and K annotated element, these represent some code elements with some reflection capabilities. Reflection is the ability to provide information about a code element at runtime, and I'll show you some examples of that in a moment. Interestingly, if we don't explicitly specify the type of the variable for this uh, function reference, if we just allow type inference to do its thing, then it won't be the usual function type. Instead, it's going to be this k function one. And the numbers on the K function types work the same as we saw earlier with the other function interface. Uh, the number represents the number of parameters that the function has. So let's see what we can do with K function one. When our code assist pops up, we can see that we've got access to reflection information like what modifiers are on the function, what annotations are on it, the name of the function, its parameters, type parameters, return types, and so on. Now, before you get your hopes up, I'm just going to tell you right now that unless you've added the Kotlin Reflect library to your project, you can't actually use any of these reflection members except for the name property. You can use that even if all you depend on is the standard library. And thankfully, that's probably the most helpful one. And of course, the invoke function is not a reflection feature, so naturally, we can still use that as well. Now, one thing that's interesting to note is that the K function one type doesn't actually exist in code. So like we can add it here and we can command click on it all we want and it's not going to find a declaration to go to. And why is that? Well, the numbered K function types are not actually declared in code anywhere. And that's why these are referred to as fictitious classes. All of the reflection properties and functions that we saw actually come from a few interfaces that are super types of these fictitious classes. And these super types include K function, and that's the one without a number at the end, K callable and K annotated element. K function is essentially the reflection counterpart of the function type that we saw earlier. Now, in case you're wondering why we've got both K function and K callable, it's because this K family also extends to properties. And since the value property in this case is mutable, we can use the mutable type here instead. Like functions, properties are also considered callable, so they sit below k callable and sibling to k function. If you ever created a property delegate, you probably remember running into k property inside the get value and set value operator functions. Now, at the beginning of this video, I pointed out three ways that we can write functions in Kotlin. We've got named functions, lambdas, and anonymous functions. Well, one thing that is worth noting about those K function types is that they only apply when we've got a reference of a named function. So, for example, if we tried to change the type of times three and times four from a regular function type to a K function type, we get a compiler error. And more importantly, if we use a K function type as a function parameter in a higher ordered function, we won't be able to accept a Lambda or an anonymous function. So in general, Kotlin application developers won't often need access to reflection information unless you're like building a framework or a mocking library or something. Also keep in mind that the availability of reflection features is gonna vary by target platform. So that's certainly a consideration if you're working on a multi-platform project. So in most cases, it's best to just stick with the usual function types. 
and avoid the reflection types unless you definitely need reflection. So that's a roundup of all the different kinds of function types in Kotlin. The numbered function types are useful for Java interop. The K function type and its friends are useful for reflection, primarily on the JVM. But in general, stick with the good old fashioned function types that use the parentheses and arrow. Now remember, new videos are published on this channel every other Wednesday. So to make sure that you catch them all, you can subscribe to this channel. And you can also join hundreds of other Kotlin developers who have signed up for my email newsletter, where you can get a heads up on all the fun things I've got going on. And you can join the newsletter today at newsletter.typealias.com. In the meantime, keep writing that Kotlin code. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today, and I'll see you next time.